Hi, everybody. And this is episode two. Um, in episode one, we were talking about making inexpensive wine. And today we're going to keep on going to keep on that theme. As you can see, this is my store of uh, all the juice, some of the juices that I use. Again, you want to find them as cheap as you can, but you, it's got to be needs to be all natural juices, 100% uh, juice. You don't want any high fructose corn syrup or things like that in them. You want them to be juices because otherwise, a lot of times it just isn't going to work. It'll it'll keep your yeast from doing what it's supposed to do. All right, we're going to come around here now. I'm, on this episode, I basically want to show you how some of the equipment that you need uh, to make and some and, and the uh, items that we use. And um, and we've I've cleaned up my brew room a little bit, uh, my garage. It's getting really kind of hot in here. I'm having to find a ways to keep the humidity down so that my wines and my beers don't go crazy. Um, anyway, so what I have here is a, uh, a pot. Remember, we showed you this in the in the first episode. Um, you can do this. Um, very easily on your uh, stove at home. Um, I uh, my wife doesn't want me to use our new stove in our new house, so I have a uh, induction burner, which I'm going to pick up another one of those. Um, so you have a pot, you have an induction burner. Make sure you clean this and sanitize it uh, before you use it. Um, and what you do is, what you're going to do is, this is where you make your uh, water and sugar. Uh, put your water and sugar mixture together. Um, you know, um, remember I showed you we were using some honey and some sugar and, and the one wine we made. So, um, again, these are all the different, this is what you do, put your, your sugar mixture in. And again, I'm telling you, mostly, I only use about four pounds of sugar. It, um, it, it makes it a nice, uh, sweet, but not too sweet. Uh, uh, my wife's more into dry wines. So, so that's your pot. And you can use, um, you've got a, a whisk or even a spoon, a slotted spoon. Um, for your fermenter right now, this is what I'm using. I told you, all I'm doing is going and buying uh, your five-gallon uh, bottled water, bottled waters, and it's 12 bucks, and you get a whole five five. You get five gallons of water. The five gallons of water you get in, you can use for making your beer, um, and uh, the uh, and then take the fermenter and you can use it for uh, your wines, um, and you can use it for a second, actually your your primary and your secondary. Um, I don't have this is the only uh, clean one I have right now, so I'm going to show you this as your primary and your secondary. Um, then you have uh, your airlock. See, this is your air your airlock and your. Um, this is very important because you need to when the as the um, um, yeast is working, it's um, it's uh, producing carbon dioxide and it needs to go somewhere. And so this uh, you have a little bit of water in here, and it diffuses in the water, and you see the bubbles, and it keeps everything from. You know, it keeps your wine and your from over overflowing and uh, creating a big mess everywhere. And here, see, I have four pounds of uh, sugar. So that's uh, that's very important. That's your sugar for your sugar water mixture. And then over here, um, I told you I was I use the level on uh, eleven eighteen yeast, um, and that that goes in at the when we're just before we're uh, we're ready to put our airlock on. And then I also make sure that I I put a label on it so that you can you know what it is and what the date is because it's about four weeks when you're doing your juice wines it's about four weeks before you can you can drink it um, when you're making your fruit wines or your grape wines that's a different story that's about six usually about six six to eight weeks and sometimes you want to let it sit a little longer because you want that and all the flavors to really get together and, and to mature and it, it, it just all depends on how you do it um, and, and uh, when, how fast you want to drink it uh, my fruit wines, I like to I like to let them go a little longer, so they have a little more maturity. And because I also give those to, to give those away, and um, and people really do like the fruit wines that I do. Um, as you see behind me, I also have another primary fer uh, fermenter back there. Uh, I use those for my beer and for wine, depending on the types of wines I'm making. And that one back here, I already have. This has a uh, as Kristen's not. This is, has a Kristen's hopped up pale ale in it. Um, that's for my. Uh, uh, Daughter's girlfriend. Uh, she uh, helped me make a beer one day, and we made we named it after her. Um, as we go back to the beer fridge for a second, um, as you see, I have a keg down here that has uh, an, an, an IPA in it. The uh, IPA in it that we're still I'm still letting it condition. Up here, I have my hops, and we'll uh, use that for other things. So uh, probably in the next episode, I want to make an apple cider for you guys. Uh, and then, uh, well, I'll make an apple wine, but it's the same. It'll be the same procedures for a hard apple cider. Um, I'm going to pick some cider up this week, and uh, we'll make one of those. I'll probably make that on on Monday of next week. Uh, that's my day off, so 
Um, as we look over here, the wines we made a, uh, a week ago, um, they're, they're working right now. They're still bubbling, having a good time. This one wine here is going to have some, uh, some. I'm not sure about that one yet. Uh, sometimes they work exactly. We'll have to taste that one, and you and I'll have to, and in in a, in the next time we do this, we'll have to work it out and see what's going on with that one. But they're still working, they're still bubbling. These are from 415 uh, when we did those. And my wines from uh, the ones I did last month and are in the back, and they're actually ready too. Um, and then, like I said, I, um, we're working on those right now. Um, just remember, this is the, the procedures are very simple for making wine. You have your sugar water mixture. Make sure you get to about 160, 165 degrees. You don't want you want to steer it because you don't want the sugar to burn at the bottom. Then you make you have a terrible tasting wine. So you don't want any, you don't want any uh, you don't want it to you don't want it to caramelize. You just want it to get it hot enough so you can um, you know get it all um, dissolved and everything to work right and make sure your water is um, san um, sanitized. Um, now, if you don't have any sanitizing solution from your local beer, so, uh, beer store or, um, or anything like that, you can use one part bleach, like, like, one ounce, like an ounce of bleach and with, a, with some water to sanitize it, but really, really, really rinse it out really good. Um, and when you're washing out your, um, your fermenters, you gotta really work on, wash them out really good because they get some sediment in them and you have to try to get, you need to really get a lot out because it could add different flavors to your wine. So let's go through the steps again, uh, like we did last week. It's, um, I'm, I'm on, and I'll keep doing this for you. The first step is to take your four pounds of sugar and your water, and about, a, about three quarters of a gallon of water, mix them together, heat them up to about 165. When they get to about 165 degrees, you want to pour them into your fermenter, okay? In your fermenter, you're going to have, uh, um, uh, already have a, uh, cup of lemon juice in it that's your um, that's your sorbic acid you'll have um, what I do is I for my so that my my wines have at least a little bit of tartness to them I put a uh, half a gallon of cranberry juice in there it gives it some good tart flavor and then you can add any other juice you want I I always have a base of some kind I, I have apple juice for base so um, and it just makes a nice base um, and then you can add your flavors to that um, um, over here at, on my on my juice rack, I have a lot of I have some mango that we're probably going to work on this week. Probably today I might make that. And um, we have grape juice. I have red raspberry, um, and I have the cranberry juice over there. So you know, just just um, follow follow. If you do this the way I'm telling you right now, you'll make a good uh, home batch of wine that you can have in about four weeks. Now. Um, you're saying, well, what if I want to, rec you know, put it, you know, kind of clear it off by it and put it into a, uh, a second fermenter? Well, after about uh, after about a week, we can have about uh, about two. After two weeks, you can take it from this fermenter and put it into another bottle like this. And what you do is you just all you need to do is take a um, take a hose and you can um, um, and I have one here somewhere, but my wife moved it somewhere. I don't know what she did, but you there's a it's a, a Yes, I can't tell you what it is right this second, but I can. Yeah, what it is, it goes in the, in the bottom here. You it, uh, it's a self primer, it, it primes itself, and it takes the, the wine from here, and you just put it down to just where the just by where the K, yeast, yeast keg is, and you can uh, pull it out into a different into a different. Uh, again, put an airlock on it. Let it set for another week or two, and then your wine should be pretty clear when you go to put it in your bottles. Um, you can use uh, screw top bottles. You can use cork bottles. I use I rewash the bottles from we've had and we uh, sanitize those. I put them in uh, to Ernest and Gallo, Julio Gallo bottles. But hey, you do whatever you want. Um, so here, let's let's go over it again. The procedure is really easy. You um, go through um, from your pot. It goes in here. Then you add your four gallons of juice. Now you'll already have a half a gallon of uh, cranberry juice or something for tartness, plus your ascorbic acid in the bottom. Okay, then your uh, water, sugar mixture. Uh, fill up the rest of this to about the. So you see my finger right here, to about right here. You don't want to go to any further than right here, uh, because you know you're gonna you want to have the carbon dioxide have, have a chance to move and the yeast. The, the, when the yeast is working, uh, that our carbon dioxide to move up and be able to move out without bubbling over so you don't want to go any further than about right here okay and then you put your you'll you'll um, set your yeast in 
put your airlock on, make sure everything is like you said, you have to sanitize everything. But once it's all together, you put your airlock on, uh, and then you're now you're set. And then you put your label right here. So you put your label, okay, and you can put uh, whatever it is, the uh, raspberry wine, blah blah blah, and what the date is, and so you know that four weeks from now you can pretty much should be able four weeks from now uh, whether you second uh, put this in uh, and after two weeks put it into a secondary or you just keep it in here in about four weeks you should be able to drink this wine and uh, and I'm going to show you um, in a couple weeks um, how we um, how I um, bottle the wine bottle my wines again I, I try to make this as easy as possible and make it so that you can do this at home on a, on a limited budget for about twenty five dollars you can usually make about a hundred dollars worth of wine. That's not bad. So, uh, again, that's uh, this episode two for today. And I, I, I hope it's been instructional and fun. Um, next Sunday, we're going to be back out at Disney at uh, Animal Kingdom, and we'll do try to shoot some fun little videos from there, and uh, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, and um, and and well, have a great day. Bye.